Hello, my friends. This is going to be a review of the Michael Tinker Price Pierce Price. Damn it, I can't read Pierre C. Katana. God, I suck. Anyway, I wanted to do a review of this sword because it's really awesome. And even though he doesn't really make katanas anymore, maybe you would if you asked him nicely. And this is the story of this one. What you can see is that I got the blade when it was damaged. I got it secondhand on a whim, and it's really kind of fun. Now, I wasn't sure if it was his work, so I reached out to him, and he were basically responded and said, Yeah, this was my work, and I don't make a ton anymore, so enjoy. And that was nice of him to take the time to do that. Anyway, this is the Suba that it came with originally. I personally didn't think much of it. I didn't really think it was bad it was just kind of simple and it didn't necessarily go with the sword and I happen to have this really awesome old Wakazashi Suba laying around and it's brass and I think it goes a little bit better you can see it next to the hibachi hibaki and what is kind of like a fuchi on the sword and I think it goes a lot better and completes the package and so I put it on there because they didn't have anything else to do with it here you can see what the hibaki and all of that kind of look like I can kind of tell that he's an experienced blacksmith, but doesn't necessarily make habaki all the time. Still, it came out really nice. The handle is also really attractive. I mean, look at this. It has so much texture and depth to it, and I'm so used to looking at the same type of sukas that this was honestly like a big knife, but still very fun. The blade also has a leather scabbard, which I thought was wood when I bought it and was looking at the pictures, but it's leather, and it's not necessarily great for doing aya, but it fits great in a frog if you want to do some sort of Eurotana type thing. Here's some measurements. The important note is that it's only slightly larger than what would constitute a wakazashi. The grip length is katana length and very comfortable for me. It's a little bit thin in terms of the, the width of the blade near the hibaki and where the yakote would be is also kind of small. But the sori is rather deep and the point of balance is pretty far up for a blade of its size. So it's going to feel a little bit tip heavy. Now that said, what I can say about the feeling of this blade is probably the reason I'm doing this review and that it's just fucking awesome. It feels nimble, it feels quick, it feels like a rapier wood or something. I can tell that somebody who knew swords made this and thought about what it should feel like or maybe it just came as second nature when they were making it. What I can say is that it, it's easy to control, it's fun to cut with, and for some reason it just goes where you want it to go. I, that's not a feeling that I usually get from swords. And you can see I can actually accomplish cuts that I wouldn't normally be able to do. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know I'm super shitty at cutting stuff. And I actually was able to hit the thing I was aiming at with this thing, which is, which is good. Now, that's really the reason I'm reviewing it, is just because it's super fun. And I think Tinker deserves some praise for his, his workmanship here. I, I don't know that he never got ever got a whole lot of praise for making katanas, but this is just is a really fun and enjoyable blade to use. More so than other lightweight katanas that I've used from the production realm of things like Shinto's and the like, and other lightweight blades from Munatoshi. It's balanced well, it's easy to cut with, it's very easy to control, and uh, frankly I just can't speak highly enough about it in terms of how fun it is. In terms of looks, it's a little funky looking, but it still cuts like a, you know, like it's supposed to, and more than that, it's just really fun to do. I was planning on cutting one or two water bottles, but once I got on a roll, I was like, oh, this is, this is too much fun, I gotta keep going. Now, it's not a super sword. You can see that I'm smacking the bottles away, and they're moving more like baseballs than they are water bottles that are being cut through, but still... It's not going to cut through a tank, but it does cut pretty deep into things, considering that it's a very small, nimble sword. Anyway, that's what I had to say. I hope you enjoyed the review. Cheers and thanks for watching.